Alright. You've read the title. You know what this video is all about. I already have an Excel file here pre-populated with data for the demo of tricks that I'll show you. We have a fictional names, birthdays, departments, base salary and bonuses here. Further to the right, we also have two tables of fictional revenue, which we'll use later. We have 34 rows of fictional data here. Let's start with the basics and we'll go deeper the rabbit hole as we move along. Let's do the auto filter first. Just highlight the data of the columns that you want to filter. Then from the home ribbon tab, drop down the sort and filter ribbon. Then click on filter. Now you will see a drop down button on each of the highlighted columns. When you click these drop down button, you will be able to filter the data based on that column. For example, we will filter with a department. Let's uncheck the select all. Then check only the information technology department. Then click OK. There you go. You can now only see the data that under the IT department. If you want to remove the filter, just drop down the column filter again and check select all. Then click OK. There we go. All the data are back. Now let's sort the data. Highlight the whole table again. Then go back to sort and filter ribbon. You can select, sort A to Z for ascending order, or Z to A for descending. But I would suggest doing a custom sort for a more flexible choice. From here, you can select a specific column that you want to sort the data with. Let's choose department. Then click OK. There we go. The data are all sorted with department now. But the names per department are still not sorted. Let's highlight the whole table again, then go back to custom sort. Now let's add a level. For this next sorting level, let's select the full name. Then OK. There we go. As you can see, we are now sorted by department first. Then each name under the same department are sorted ascendingly as well. Do note though that when sorting, you should always select all the columns of the table. For example, I only select the first three columns and did a sort. This will only sort the highlighted column and leaving behind the other columns in the table, which will make the salary and bonus row unmatched to its proper names. So you should always highlight the whole table before doing a sort. Now, since our data overflows to the bottom, when I scroll down, we will never know what data each column is for, because the column names are already above the viewable section of the sheet. We can easily remedy that by clicking the first row after the column header. Then go to the View Ribbon tab. Then click on the Freeze panes. Now when you scroll down, the column header remains on its place, regardless how low you scroll down. To remove the freeze panes, you just select Unfreeze panes. You can also freeze the panes by column. For example, to freeze the full name column, select the column after it, then do a freeze panes. Now when you scroll to the right, the full name column stays in place. Now let me show you autofill. We have a base salary and a bonus data here. The total of the two should be equal to the taxable salary. So for row 2, the taxable salary will be D2 plus E2. Now, instead of repeating the formula to the next rows, you can use autofill by dragging the square dot from the bottom right corner of the cell, going down up to the last row of the same column. There you go. Excel is smart enough to know that from the source of D2 plus E2, the next row should add the row 3 data of the same columns, that is D3 plus E3. Then for row 4, it is D4 plus E4, and so on, up to the last row D35 plus E35. That is autofill. For the net salary, in our example, we have a fixed 25% for the tax as indicated in cell M2. So we are deducting 25% of the taxable salary to itself. So, for row 2, that would be F2, which is the taxable salary, less the product of F2, and a 0.25 value from cell M2. There you go. When we apply the autofill here, let's see what happens. Here we go. As you can see, from row 3 and below, there has been no 25% tax deductions done. When we look at the formula, you will see that the autofill also moved the reference to column M. So the row 3 now references M3, and there's nothing there. Row 4 references M4, and so on. To correct this, we will need the M3 reference to stay at M3. To do that, we will need to use an absolute reference. Absolute reference is done by adding a dollar sign in front of a row number or a column letter. In this case, we need an absolute reference for both column and row, so we will add dollar sign to both of them. So this will be $m, $2. Now with the help of the absolute reference using the dollar sign, when we do an autofill, the M2 reference should stick with cell M2. There we go. When we check the formula in row 2, it is still referencing cell M2 now. Every row is being deducted with 25% tax correctly this time. Autofill has more options hidden within it. The usual way is to drag the cell using the left button of the mouse. We all know that now. But did you know that you can also drag the cell using the right click of the mouse? And by doing that, you will be given more options on how the autofill will work. There you go. Since we are autofilling a numeric value here, most options are disabled. So let's try creating a data for, let's say, a date here below. 
Let's try January 1, 2022, and January 2, 2022. When I highlight the two rows, then drag for autofill using the mouse left button, it will recognize the pattern and create a sequential date with one day interval. But when I drag the data using the mouse right button, I will have these options on how Excel will generate the autofill. Let's say fill in with weekdays only. There you go. January 8 and 10 are skipped because they are weekends. The autofill just populated it with weekdays as selected from the option. Let's do another sample, and this time let's select to fill it with months. There you go. Since our example is first and second day of January, it autofills the first two days of every month. Now let's do fill years. There we go. You surely get the logic by now. By using the right mouse button when dragging for autofill, you will have more options on how autofill will generate the data. Aside from autofill, we also have flash fill in Excel. For the last name column, we can type in the same last name from column A, of the same row here. When we go to the row below it, then press Ctrl E from your keyboard, Excel will recognize the pattern and do a flash fill of surnames for all the remaining blank rows below. There you go. We have Gibbs, Chavez, and so on, up to the last row. Really easy, without using any formula, just by pressing Ctrl E. This can also work on dates. Let's do the birth year. That's 1992 for row 3. Type that in. Then go one row down. And press Ctrl E. There you go. Very easy work. Imagine having thousands of rows and using this flash fill for it. Let's now do the initials. That's AS for the first row, then go down, and Ctrl E. We have all the name initials automatically filled in now. Let's now try abbreviation for the department. First row is accounting, so let's put in an all caps of ACC. Perfect. We have ACC, Dev, HUM, and so on. A great and easy flash fill function for Excel. Okay. We have separated the last name here from the full name. But let's say, we want to automatically separate the first and last name and have their own separate columns. We can use text to columns for that. You should select and highlight the data that you want to process first. Then go to the data ribbon tab. Then click on the text to columns ribbon. From here, let's choose delimited. Then click next. Since the first name and last name are separated by a space, we should choose space as our delimiter. As you can see in the data preview, first and last name are already separated. Let's click the next button. Then let's choose where to put these process data. Let's select row 38 here. Then let's click the finish button. There we go. We have easily separated first and last name without writing any formulas nor manually typing anything. Just using the reliable text to columns function of Excel. Now let's go to our two revenue tables here in the right side. When you look at the two tables, do you spot any difference? Maybe you did, but it will take time and a lot of focused effort just to spot the difference between the two tables. Fortunately, we can easily automate that in Excel. Let's highlight the two tables. Then go to the Home Ribbon tab. Click on Conditional Formatting. Then expand Highlight Cells Rules. And click Duplicate Values. From here you can select if you want to highlight the duplicate data or the unique data. Based on our data, we have more duplicates, so let's choose to highlight the unique data, which are those that differs from each table. You can also select a different color for the highlights here. I'll stay with the light red. Click OK. So by just a few clicks, we can easily spot the difference between the two tables. Some differences are hard to spot with our naked eye, but Excel can easily see them. Some data here even looks exactly the same in the naked eye, but they are flagged as different. Like this July 2021 here. If we look closely and click on the cell, you will see that the first one has a value of July 1, 2021, while the other is July 30, 2021. Since it only shows the month and year, it can easily fool our eye, but not Excel, through the power of conditional formatting. Another great Excel functionality to make our life easier. Now let's say you want to look at the data in a different way to easily compare them. You want the months here to be a column, instead of a row. Then the income data laid out is one row each. You can easily do that by transposing them. Let's do it for the 2020 data. Copy the 2020 data from the first table. On a blank space here, let's right-click. Select Paste Special. Then check the Transpose checkbox here at the bottom. Then click OK. There we go. The columns are too small to display the amounts. Let's highlight them, then double-click on the edge of the columns to auto-adjust their width. Here we go. So now we have transposed the rows from the original table and made them our columns. Since we already have the months as column header in the transpose table, let's just copy the 2020 income data from the second table. Right click. Paste special. Check transpose. Then click the OK button. There we go. We now have the data from the two tables on top of one another, on the same column for each month. Easy PC.
we have created several formulas in this worksheet, which you can easily view by clicking on a cell, one by one. If you want to view all the formulas within the worksheet easier, at a glance, you can easily do that by pressing Ctrl tilde from your keyboard. There you go, you can now view all the formulas in taxable salary and net salary columns. This can be handy, if you have a huge worksheet, and you don't know which columns are made out of formulas, and which are hard-coded data. But just a press of a keyboard, you'll see all of the formulas in your worksheet. To go back to the normal view, just press Ctrl tilde again. Lastly, did you know that you can also import data directly from public websites? I have a website open here from Hollywood Reporter. We will try to import the data from this website into our Excel worksheet. To do that, let's copy the URL of the page. Then in the Excel, go to the Data Ribbon tab, then click the From Web Ribbon. Let's then paste the URL here, and click OK. Excel will then extract all the data it can extract from the page. Here we go. It has extracted three sets of data. These are the same data that are the contents of this page. Let's work on Table 1 here. If you are good with the data, you can click the Load button here, and the table will be loaded in a new worksheet. But if you want to clean up the data first, you should click the Transform Data button, which is what I'm going to do. This will then load the Power Query Editor. From here you can clean up the data, like removing a column that you don't want, for example. Or filtering the data, like removing those rows with a null value, as another example. When you are good with the data, you can click the Close and Load ribbon from the top left corner. This will then load the data to a new worksheet in your Excel file. There we go. We now have the data from the website we've connected to. For the maintenance options of the data, you can click anywhere in the table, then go to the Query Ribbon tab, and click on the Properties ribbon. From here you can set the refresh interval of the data. You can set a fixed time interval in minutes, or set it to refresh every time you open the Excel file. With this, you'll be sure to have the latest data when they are updated from the source web page. Alright. That's it for this video. I hope these tips and tricks will make your usage of MS Excel a lot easier, pleasant, and productive. If you enjoy this video, give me a thumbs up. If it has helped you in any way, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Nilasuj for watching. Nova Air.